Hey, it's John at Tinderbox Arts. So I did a previous video on smart chargers, microprocessor controlled chargers uh, for motorcycles and cars too, for that matter. And um, there's one aspect of it that keeps coming up on BMW, especially forums, that just makes me crazy. So I want to talk about that particular aspect of it in this video. And that is how to connect your charger to your motorcycle. Now this is the end of an SAE pigtail, which I'll show you in a second. That's one method. But the other method could be connecting um, a particular type of charger to uh, one of these DIN ports on the motorcycle itself. Now this is a CAN bus uh, controlled DIN port and um, that's another option, but it requires a special type of charger. It also has significant, in my opinion, downsides, which is what I want to talk about in this video. All right, so this is an SAE pigtail, and typically it comes with uh, the charger that you buy. Um, you know, it's usually included in the package. It has two ends to it. It's about 16 inches long or so. Now, let me see if I can get both ends in the picture here. So you have, here are the two ends. On the left side here is the end for the charger. That's what the charger plugs into. It's a standard connector. Um, it's used on any of these chargers. It has a little cap that you, you know, plastic cap that you can put on it. So when, you, when it's not in use, you can plug this cap on here and um, that'll protect it from the elements. It's also designed in a way that you can't accidentally re reverse polarity. So positive and negative are separated physically and there's just no way to screw that up. It's sailor proof as we used to say. So that's a standard connector. So any charger uh, in the modern time uh, that you buy is gonna have this uh, connector on it. The other end is what goes to the battery. So you have a positive and negative side that's permanently connected to the battery. And you also have a standard automotive fuse so that if you have any you know, problem in the future, the fuse blows or whatever, it's easy to get that at a local parts store or pull it off a car if you happen to be near one or whatever. There's lots of options there. So it's a standard fuse. The gauge of the wire is fairly thick. Uh, it could be a 10 gauge, but it's probably a 12 gauge. Uh, but that's thick enough where you can do fast charging. It's robust. You can put a lot of current through that and it's not going to be a problem. And you'll also notice that there's very little physical connections between the charger and the battery. In fact, there's none. <laughs> it's just the cable itself. So there's no uh, opportunity other than the direct connection to the battery and this connection right here. There's no other opportunity for voltage drops or things like that where the microprocessor control charger would accidentally read the wrong voltage uh, and you know misconstrue what uh, is going on there and as a result send the wrong type of charging um, algorithm to uh, the battery. So it, it's, it's simple, uh, it's standard, and there's really nothing to screw up. So this pigtail gets permanently installed on the bike. You leave it sticking out wherever it's convenient, and that may be different places depending on you know your particular bike and what you want. Uh, but you leave it somewhere convenient like this. It's perfectly safe. You have that cap when, you, when it's not in use, and that cap is pretty weatherproof. It works pretty well. And then the cable goes through the fairing, whatever you got, and then there's a direct connection to the battery. And again, you know, there's very little chance for a voltage drop because you have a direct, robust connection to the battery right here, and that's all there is. There's nothing in between the other end. So the charger itself, you know, a typical generic charger like this, um, has the SAE connector on this side, and that's what plugs into the pigtail. So there's really very little um, between the charger itself and the battery, and that's what you want because these are microprocessor controlled um, chargers. They have algorithms in there which tell it how much current to put out and for how long, and um, it depends on an accurate reading of voltage from the battery in order to you know, apply the correct algorithm. So every time you introduce a new connection, whether it's one like this or something in a harness, um, you're also introducing more opportunity for uh, false readings because of corrosion or poor connections or whatever. So you want to minimize the amounts of connections between the charger and the battery. All right, let's look at the other option for BMW owners, which is to use a charger that's compatible with a CAN bus system, and it would allow you to plug in directly to this DIN, DIN socket. So this DIN socket is a standard uh, connector. 
Uh, in America, it's, it's less um, common, but you can get adapters or whatever, so it is possible to use it. And there's a brand called Optimate, um, which is a popular brand of charger. Uh, nothing wrong with it, but uh, it, you know, it gives you the option to either use the SAE pigtail or use this CAN bus system. So, if we do this system, the adherence of this, like the idea that you just plug it in right here and you're good to go. Well, yeah, but there's some other things you need to think about. So this socket here is connected to a wiring harness. So you're introducing in that wiring harness opportunities for false readings because you know you could have corrosion over time and that kind of thing. It's also a very small gauge wire. Probably I haven't I didn't look at it, but it's probably 18 gauge or 20 gauge, something like that. So you cannot put high capacity current over that. Um, and it even says, um, if you read closely in some of the instruction manuals, that um, if you need to do a high capacity, like if your battery gets below 9 volts or something like that and you need to really charge it up, you cannot use this. That's one issue. But the other bigger issue is that it's going through the CAN bus system, which means um, that you need a special type of charger and it has to wake up that CAN bus system. It's a computer. It's a little mini computer. It has to wake up that system, which uses electricity, by the way, um, and go through that system to get to the battery. Let me show you something. So here's part of a wiring diagram uh, for a BMW R1200RT. And you know, the, the wiring may be different depending on what year you have, but this is just an example. So you're going to have these onboard sockets, that DIN socket that we were just looking at. And the way these things work are, uh, they have small gauge wire, you know, going into a harness. So you have multiple areas there for uh, voltage drops to occur. Then it goes into the CAN bus system or a, a little computer here. Um, and then, you know, it gets routed through more harnesses eventually to the battery. But there's lots of opportunity there for voltage drops to occur. Plus, you have to wake up that CAN bus system um, and rely on it to give you accurate readings through all those um, you know, connections. Now, under perfect conditions, it will work. But um, if things, you know, the bike gets older and, and it starts to age on you, there are going to be voltage drops that occur in these harness connections. And the CAN bus system itself can cause issues if it gets woken up and does not go back to sleep after the charger um, you know, doesn't need it anymore and that kind of thing. And there are examples in the real world of that happening. So there's just more opportunity here for things to go wrong. And because you have small gauge wire, you're not going to be able to do heavy duty charging. So all that aside, there are some other things to think about as well. Having a standard SAE pigtail connector like this means that you um, can use other people's uh, chargers uh, in a pinch or whatever. So if you send your bike to a shop, it ends up staying there for a long period, they're going to have standard chargers and they'll connect this uh, for you. Um, in America, probably, I would guess, you know, 80 or 90 percent of the bikes on the road have this connector. And most shops, dealers, um, will have chargers that they'll connect using this. But if you require a specialized charger for the DIN uh, socket, they may not have that. Another thing to think about is, um, you know, if, you, if you're on the road somewhere and you're in a pinch, um, having a standard connector like this can be helpful. I'll give you one real world example. I went on a uh, Patriot Guard Riders uh, mission one time, and it was on my BMW, and it turned out my alternator belt just shredded. So I had no alternator. I didn't realize it at first. I was, you know, already an hour away. Um, and then, you know, by the time I figured this out, something was going wrong, I had to try to get home. Now, in my case, uh, I really, I, I risked it and I did get home. It turns out your battery will give you about an hour's worth of riding before it craps out on you. But let's say I didn't have that option or I found out too late, you know, I could have charged up my battery, you know, stopped at somebody's house or stopped at a Walmart or something and, and bought a charger and charged up the battery and that would give me another hour's worth of riding. So, you know, situations like that, it's nice to have a standard connector and not require some specialized DIN socket um, charger that needs, you know, to, to be CAN bus compatible. I could just use a standard charger and that's nice to have. The other nice thing about these connectors is that you can use it for other things. So, um, you know, you could use it for heated gear, you could connect certain devices like phones and other things to it. Um, and you can use a standard connector um, for 
adapters that you may need or just directly. Some of the heated gear works that uses these uh, standard connectors directly. And you have a direct connection to the battery. So, you know, even with the bike off, you can use this connector if you like. It won't hurt anything, it won't hurt the CAN bus system, it works just fine. So that's another you know, plus to having a standard connection like this. So look, if you want to use uh, the CAN bus compatible um, chargers, you know, like the Optimate or something like that, there's nothing wrong with that. It'll work in most cases. All I'm saying is there are definitely advantages to having the standard SAE pigtail. You can use any charger, you know, you don't need some specialty charger. You're not going to have potential problems down the line if you get voltage drops, um, you know, because of the harness or because of the CAN bus system or things like that. There's not going to be false readings with this. Uh, there's just fewer connections. You can do fast charging with this, uh, which is not something you can do with the uh, CAN bus compatible uh, chargers. Um, and it's standard, so you can use it for other things as well. So there definitely are advantages to using this. I know in the UK, maybe some other places, um, this is not as popular an option with motorcycle riders, but here in the US, everybody has one of these, and for good reason. So I would just encourage you to think about going this route rather than the CAN bus route. I just think it's more reliable uh, and just gives you more options. So that's all I'm saying.